Today in Ancient Torah Manuscripts, we're going to look at the British Library OR 4445, Ele Hadvarim. These are the words, the beginning of Deuteronomy 1. Let's dive in. Shalom, welcome to Rob on the Rock. I'm Rob Vanhoff, and today I want to share with you uh, this manuscript. It's from the British Library. It's number 4445 is the name of the manuscript, and it uh, is over a thousand years old. It's written in the 10th century, and this is the end of the book of Numbers, as you see, and the beginning of the book of Deuteronomy. And for ancient manuscripts, uh, today I'm talking about the book of Deuteronomy. So I'm going to zoom in here, and what you see here is the end of the book of, of uh, Numbers, and then a, a, a little description of the number of verses in the book of Numbers, and then it goes right in to the book of Deuteronomy. And so I'm going to zoom in a little more. Now, this is in a codex, so this is not a scroll, but this is a book. Uh, and um, it's very, very beautiful. Sadly, much of it is destroyed, but we do have here the beginning of the book of Deuteronomy. And notice there's no verse numbers. There's not even a book name or anything like that. Um, what the mini writing above is describing the number of verses in the prior book, uh, the book of Numbers. And then it says here, Ele, so Aleph, Lamed, He, Ele, and then Hadvarim, Hadvarim. These are the Devarim. These are the words. And then you see a, a partial Aleph here. And that likely anticipates the Aleph that's the next word, Asher. Ele hadvarim asher diber Moshe el kol Yisrael. That's the beginning of the book of Deuteronomy. These are the words. Ele hadvarim. These are the things. These are the words which asher diber Moshe, which Moshe spoke. Diber is spoke. Uh, so we have the root devar here twice, dalit bet reish for hadvarim, words or things. And then the verb diber. In the PL, Dibel Moshe means Moshe spoke. And then it says, El Kol Yisrael, to all Israel. Isn't that beautiful? Um, now, you'll see each line here starts with an olive. Uh, and so the scribe, you can see, he's very careful in his handwriting here. But what I want to zoom in on is, is this little circle right here between Eleha Devarim. Now you notice a lot of these words just blend together, but I'm going to zoom in really close here. And you see we have the word Ele, Aleph, Lamed, He, and then a little circle here. And then it says Hadvarim. These are the words. Well, this in the Masoretic tradition, this little circle indicates a marginal note. And what we're going to do, it's called the, uh, the Masorak Tana the small Masora, uh, and it's right over here, and you see a little, little letter hey with a dot above it. Well, that little letter hey means five. So what this means is Elech HaDevarim occurs five times. Now it's referring to the Tanakh as a whole. Remember for the Masoretes, there was a fixed set of texts for the, the temple scribes and the Jewish scribes all the way up to the time of uh, the 10th century when these are being written, there is a fixed uh, canon, what we call the Tanakh. And, and so the five means in Tanakh, five times Elah Devarim in Tanakh. And then there's a little strange note right below it. Now the, Masor uh, the Masora is usually in Aramaic. It says Vachad, so Chad, Chet Dalit is the word for one, you might remember in the Shema, Echad, mean, you know, Adonai Echad, it says in the Shema, he is one. Well, in Aramaic, Chad, without the Aleph, means one. Chad, and then it says, Ve'ele, Vav, and then this is what we call a, an Aleph Lamed ligature. It is the Aleph and the Lamed in one beautiful character. So that's Aleph Lamed and then He. So it's five times what the Misra note is telling us here, what the, the knowledge that the scribe is encoding here. It's at his own discretion. You know, not every uh, Masoret would put the same note here. 
but they would not they would have the knowledge but the different scribes would notate these manuscripts according to what they felt was important or according to what they were being instructed to put there um, but there's much more masora than there are opportunities to to write all the notes in, in any given manuscript so we have Ele Hadavarim with the circle. We look over five times. That means in all of Tanakh, five times Ele Hadavarim, five times these are the words or the things. We'll get into that in a minute. The Had, the Ele. So all this means is this is shorthand to say five times Ele Hadavarim and then one time the Ele Hadavarim. And these are the things. So what we're going to do here tonight is look, I, I have all those verses. So there's five verses with Ele HaDvarim. We're going to look at all five of those. And then we're going to look at the one that's Ve Ele HaDvarim. Now we know that the master scribes over a thousand years ago and beyond, um, they would have known kind of like a hypertext link. If you think about using the internet and you see a link, you know, you're reading an article and then there's a words underlined or in a different font or a different color and you hover over that and you can click that and that takes you to another link. That's how this particular type of Masora list can work, but in the minds of those scribes. So the trained scribe, the mature scribe, would not only be able to say El Hadavarim five times and one and these are the words, Ve El Hadavarim, they would be able to recite those verses to you. In other words, they are, in a way, hypertext in their own um, memories as a living text of Scripture. Not living because it changed, but because it all exists simultaneously in their memory. And so something like this, Elech Devarim, uh, whereas in the, to this day and age, you go to Google and you type in a query and it pulls up that string for you. That happens in an instant in the mind and heart of the trained scribe. So let's look at this. So just one more time, Ele HaDvarim, the circle between them, between the two words means that that pair, Ele HaDvarim, occurs five times because He is the fifth letter. The dot above it tells us that is uh, not a letter hey to be understood as a letter hey but it but it is a number it's to be understood as the number five and then finally the chad ve'ele and there's one more the chad and one ve'ele hadvarim so there's six total five of them without the vav one with okay i hope that that is uh clear clear for you now we're going to look um at a just a document i typed up that gives all these uh, but they're not going to be in order because I started with the Deuteronomy. So here we go, Deuteronomy 1.1. 1, 1. And um, what's it say? Um, it says, these are the words. So what I've done, I've underlined the Elah HaDavarim. These are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Arava, opposite Suf, between Paran and Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth and Dizahav. So these are the words, very simple. Now we're going to look back. Two of the Eleha Dvarims are in Exodus. And the first in Exodus is in 19, 4 through 6. This is the Lord speaking, right? He's brought them to Mount Sinai. You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That's a, a goy kadosh. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So this is the Lord telling Moses what to speak to, his, to Israel. At Mount Sinai, it says, Eleha Devarim, these are the words. So, so far, we see words as the translation of Devarim. Again, in Exodus, we go to Exodus 35, 1 through 3. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, Eleha Devarim, these are the things that Adonai has commanded you to do, 
Six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to Adonai. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in all your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. So again, Elah Dvarim. But notice how here, now this is the ESV, chose things for Dvarim rather than words. Now we're hitting the limit. If you just had an English Bible program and you typed in, these are the things, it would bring up this verse, but it wouldn't bring up um, uh, like Deuteronomy 1 or Exodus 19. If the translators there have words, this is why uh, dealing with the text in the original language is crucial and uh, absolutely essential if absolute razor sharp clarity is desired. If you want the highest resolution image possible of God's word, it's it got to be in the original languages. And the, the translations are approximations. They're like thumbnail sketches of that. Okay, we're going to continue on here. So we, we've got three so far. The Deuteronomy 1 is Eleha Devarim. Exodus 19, Eleha Devarim. Exodus 35, Eleha Devarim. There's three. Remember, we have five. So we're going to do number four here is Isaiah 42, 16. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things, Eleha Devarim, I do and I do not forsake them. So now we've left the Torah. So three are in the Torah. Deuteronomy 1, Exodus 19, Exodus 35. There's the three in the Torah. And now in the prophets, Isaiah 42. Eleha devarim. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. So the verses here are not that we're theologically necessarily insisting on real tight match in terms of specific topic. That's not the point. The scribes are uh, retaining a, the purest possible memory of the scriptures in the original language. And so when they, when they write Eleha Devarim, their mind is very careful to know exactly, precisely where that gem, where that phrase is in all of Tanakh. These are the things I do. Okay, that's four. We have one more and it's in. Zechariah 8, uh, 16 and 17. Eleha devarim. Now, this is the Lord speaking. These are the things. Now, again, devarim could just as much be words. These are the words, but it's these are the things. Eleha devarim that you shall do. So in, in uh, Isaiah, Eleha devarim that I do, says the Lord. But there's also Eleha devarim that you shall do. Speak the truth one to another. How important is that? It's very difficult to speak the truth when we are concerned about how it's going to be received. And what does Yeshua say? Speak the truth in love. The truth is absolutely crucial. Uh, some people, sometimes it's not easy to hear the truth. Someone speaks truth to you if it's against your presumptions. If you have an assumed world um, that is like a helium balloon, a hot air balloon, and some and the truth, you know, it's not grounded in reality. And then someone speaks lovingly and speaks the truth to you and brings truth to you. That can be like popping that balloon, uh, your hot air balloon. You might not like that. But if you love truth, Yeshua says, if you love truth, they come to me, come to Yeshua. Those who love truth come to the light. He says, this is the Lord it's telling us, this is the things you shall do. These are the words that you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgments that are true. And make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. And love no false oath. For all these things I hate, declares Adonai. So there was our fifth. Eleha devarim. These are the words or these are the things 
We had one in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 1.1. 1, 1. That's the beginning, Elahad Devarim. Now, in modern uh, Jewish world, it's just called Devarim, words. But the scribal name for uh, the book of Deuteronomy is Elehad Devarim. These are the words. And we saw it once in Deuteronomy, twice in Exodus, once in Isaiah 42, here in Zechariah 8. Now we had, remember the Masora note said, V'chad ve'ele, one time and these, ve'elehad devarim. And that is in the book of Yermiah, Jeremiah. And this is what it says here, verses, uh, Jeremiah 30, verses 4 through 7. Ve'elehad devarim. Now the ESV is choosing here uh, words again. And actually, this is a modified ESV because the ESV has, these are the words. They don't translate the vav. So I went back and I modified the ESV here. I put the and just so we needed to differentiate it from the ele devarim, hadvarim that we saw before. So this is ve ele hadvarim. And these are the words that Adonai spoke concerning Israel and Judah. Thus says Adonai, we have heard a cry of panic, of terror, and no peace. Ask now and see, can a man bear a child? <laughs> Pretty uh, poignant for our day and age here in the 21st century, huh? In the, in the year 2022, can a man bear a child? Um, rhetorically, the answer is no in Scripture. Man cannot bear a child. This is the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth saying this. Ask now and see, see for yourself, can a man bear a child? Why then do I see every man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? So there are men and there are women. Why has every face turned pale? Alas, that day is so great, there is none like it, for it is a time of distress for Jacob, yet he shall be saved out of it. That's wonderful news. A time of distress for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it because God is faithful to his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So this is the v'chad ve'ele, and one ve'ele, and these are the words. And that's Jeremiah 30, uh, starting with verse 4. So if we go back and we see our um, manuscript here, and one more time we can see uh, ele hadvarim, these are the words. And of course, again, this says, asher diber Moshe, el Yisrael, these are the things, these are the words which Moshe, Moshe spoke to all Israel. And we noted this little tiny circle here. And we looked at the margin, it says five times. And what we did is we looked at each of those five, two in, well, one here, two in Exodus, one in uh, Isaiah 42, one in Zechariah 8, and then Vechad Ve'ele. And that's the one from Jeremiah 30. Ve'ele Hadvarim. So this is just a little tiny exploration of a Masora note. Now look at one of these pages is full of Masora notes. And each Masora note uh, will take you on a, a wonderful adventure, just like we did here. The scribes knew the scripture so, so well. And it's a reminder that we must prioritize the reading and meditation on the words of the living God, on the words of Yeshua. If indeed we love him, then his word has pride of place in our hearts and in our mind. And we must daily put away all distractions and sit and pray and open his word and we must be renewed, right? We must be transformed and our minds renewed as we seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And we trust that all the other things will be added unto us. All the things of the day will come in their due time, but we must be with Yeshua first and foremost. Uh, otherwise, a person will get swept away by every wind of doctrine. They will be swept away by the noise of the world and the lusts 
of the eyes and the pride of life. So just as these uh, Jewish scribes over a thousand years ago paid attention so carefully to the Word of God and preserving it and making notes such as the one we explored tonight, uh, so too, every day we need that time to nourish that tree that we are. Like it says in Psalm 1, it's been transplanted of Palgeyamayim upon the, the streams of water that we would bear fruit for his kingdom. So I hope this is an encouragement to you and even a prod to spend time with the Lord in prayer and in his word. Shalom.